All right, this is the last lesson in our Unit 7, Solving Equations with Rational Number Coefficients. Coefficient is the number with the variable. <laughs> Two vocab, a rational number. We're working with the fractions, all right? A rational number is a number that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Remember, integers are all whole numbers and they're opposites. A reciprocal. The part that I want you to make sure that you have is this is a good example, so show the example. A reciprocal, like if you have the number 8. Get my pen in here. Right. The number is 8, its reciprocal is 1 8 because to turn a whole number into a fraction, so you can make 8 is a rational number, put it into a fraction form, a ratio 8 to 1. The reciprocal, then you flip it is 1 to 8. But what happens when you multiply a number by its reciprocal? What do you end up getting? If I take 8 times its reciprocal of 1 over 8, what does that equal? What does it equal? It always equals, well, 8 times 1 is 8 over 1 times 8 is 8, which equals 1. So any number times its reciprocal Equal, equals 1. So that's what we're going to do today to cancel out those fractions so you're not having to even turn them into decimals. Alright, I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to show you how to clear a decimal today by using the common denominator. And every number has a reciprocal except 0. Because if you take 0 and put it over 1, 0 divided by 1 is 0, but its reciprocal is 1 over 0, which is undefined because if you multiply it, you get 0 over 0. Anytime 0 is on the bottom, it's bad. You can't divide by something that doesn't exist, so it is undefined. So every number has a reciprocal except 0. Like we just talked about, when you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you always get 1. We did the 8, but if you take this one, 3 over 1 times <coughs> 1 over 3, that equals 3 over 3, which equals 1. And then also you might hear this called the multiplicative inverse. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it's called a multiplicative inverse. Practice. Now this is just a one-step equation. Four-fifths x equals negative 18. Now you guys have been just doing this on your own and you've been turning that fraction into a decimal. Four divided by five, you get 0.8. Then you have to worry about converting it, all this kind of stuff. When I see this, <coughs> I want to clear the fraction. There's only one fraction to get rid of, and that's the four-fifths. And what I just teach you, you take anything times its reciprocal, what do you get? One. So let's take, an, and it's an equation, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. other. So let's take this side times the reciprocal, 5 fourths, all right? If we do that here, we have to take it times all the terms over here, 5 fourths. Now, on this side, what happens? We end up getting what? One, because fives cancel out. 1 and 1, 4's cancel out, 1 and 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 1x. One or if you didn't simplify, you'd get 20 over 20 if you multiplied across, which still equals 1. So 1x one or x equals, what do I get over here? What do I need to do to this negative 16? Excellent. 16 over 1. Do I have to have a common denominator when I multiply? No, that's the beauty of it. Now I could multiply negative 16 times 5 and then divide that by 1 times 4 is 4. Or you can what? What do we do over here? Simplify. simplify. What, what can I cross out and simplify? I can do 4 goes into here once, 
4 goes into a negative 16, negative 4. So now we get negative 4 times 5 equals negative 20, over 1 times 1 is 1. So our answer is negative 20. Now if you don't want to do the simplifying, because you guys are allowed to use your calculators, on your calculators, do your numerator. What did you get? Negative 16 times 5. You get a negative what? Divide that by 4. You get a negative what? You get a negative 20. So either way you get the same answer. Whatever you're most comfortable with. With the least amount of errors, I should say also. B. Now what? Does that have just one fraction to work with? No. How many do we have? Two. Two. So, hmm, now we have to look for a common denominator. We can't just take <coughs> this one times it's reciprocal and this one times it's reciprocal. What is the common denominator for seven and five? Or do you want to just do the reciprocal? What do you want to do? You want to clear the fraction? There's two ways you could do this. We could do the reciprocal of this one, which is fine. Let's do it both ways. So if I take the reciprocal of this, what is it? 7 over 6. Seven over six. So those cancel out. Leave me with just my x. x equals, and then take this time, 7 over 6. That's easy enough. What is 2 times 7? 14 over 30. Is that simplified? No. What can I divide it by? I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by 2, and I equal 7 over 15. So x <coughs> equals 7 fifteenths. Or you could have simplified. You could have went uh, 2 into here 3 times. Seven times. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. My bad. Yeah, I multiplied the answer. There we go. Two goes into here, one. Two goes into here, three. There, one equals seven. One times seven is 14. <coughs> or seven, I mean, and five times three is 15. Then you, if you simplify right away before you multiply, your answer is in simplest form. So if you don't simplify in here, Make sure that you ask yourself, is my answer simplified before I go on to the next problem? Now we get into some where you could clear the fractions if you wanted to and work in whole numbers. This one might be a little bit more work doing it that way. Actually, I'm going to wait on that. I think we have one coming up on that. Let's go to C. Let's stick with uh, the reciprocal again. What's our reciprocal that we're going to multiply by? 3 over 2. Yep. 3 over 2. So what do I get when I multiply this times 3 over 2? equals 1. So x. Do you want to take this times 3 over 2 and this times 3 over 2 also? Or should we red rover first? Okay, so now we're going to have x equals instead of a minus 17, what are you going to do? What is 19 plus 17? 36. So now we have to take the 36 times 3 over 2. What does that end up being? Simplify. I would too. I would simplify. 2 goes into here once. 2 goes into here. Twice. 18. Now what's 18 times 3? 54. X equals 54. So you're going to want to simplify Red Rover 
before you start multiplying your reciprocal and simplifying. Now, what should we do here? Do we want to red rover anything first, or do you want to get rid of the fractions first? Excuse me. Okay, let's clear those fractions and make like all whole numbers. But now we have two different fractions. What is my common denominator? My least common multiple. Six. My least common multiple is six. So we're going to multiply everything times a six. This times six and this times six. What do I get when I multiply this? times 6 over 1. one. I do. I get 1x. So x, what does this turn into? 6 over 1 times 1 over 3 is 6 over 3, which equals? 2 over 1, or just 2 equals, and then what's 7 times 6? 42. Now I have all whole numbers to work with. A lot easier than both of those fractions. What do I do now? Yep. Minus 2. What's my final answer? X equals 40. What's my least common denominator? Least common multiple for 4, 10, and 5. 2. The smallest number that all of them will go into. smallest number that the both all three go into? 20. So that means you have to multiply everything times 20 or 20 over 1. You have to multiply that by 20. You have to multiply this term, negative, times 20 over 1, and this one times 20 over 1. What do I get? What do those three terms turn into? Hold up your answers on your board. I want to see what you get. Just, you don't have to solve it, just show me what your equation turns into when you clear those fractions. So I rewrote it underneath so you could see what I was multiplying because the common denominator, least common multiple was 20. So if I take this term times 20, what do you get down here? Take 3 tenths times 20, what do you get? And then take 2 fifths times 20. What does your new equation end up being? What is 20 over 4? That turns into what? It turns into 5x. 20 times 1 is 20. Or you could have went 4 goes into here 1. 5. 5 over 1 is 5. Now this is a minus times a positive, so it's still a negative. 6. And that turns into 6 because 10 goes into here once. Twice, 3 times 2, 6 over 1, so just a plain old 6 equals 8. Everybody agree? 5 goes into here 1, 4, or 80 over 5, which equals 8. Now solve that problem. What do I do? Red Rover send over plus the 6. Now I have 5x equals what? What do I get? 14. Now I divide both sides by 5. X equals, all right, so now is that in simplest form? X equals 14 divided by 5. Is that in simplest form? Yes. Is it an improper fraction? Yes. Will I make you turn it into a mixed number? No. I will let you just leave it like that. If you did turn it into a mixed number, what would it be? How many times does 5 go into 14 without going over? 2, because 5 times 2 is 10. How many leftovers? How many remainders? 4 fifths. And then reverse it. Is 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4, 14 over 5? Okay. So if it was a mixed number, it would be 2 and 4 fifths. F. Show me what your equation will be when you clear the fractions. What do I do to this 6 then? What's its denominator? has a denominator of 1. Now we have to find the LCM of 6, 4, and 1. What is it? Don't say 24. 
24 would work. You wouldn't get the answer wrong. You just have more simplifying to do. But what would be a better 12. LCM? 12. Multiply everything times 12 or 12 over 1. What do you get here, here, and here? Hold up your answer on your boards. Now your answers have to be in fraction form. Leave them as improper fractions. Don't turn them into decimals. We're doing fractions today. So what is 12 over 1 times 5 over 6? What do I get when I multiply these two? 60 over 6, which equals what? What do you get? Or if you simplify, three, 6 goes into here once, 6 goes into here 2, you get 10 over 1. So I get 10. Now take it times this term of a negative 3 fourths. A negative 3 fourths times a positive 12, it's going to give me a negative something. Well, what's negative 3 fourths times 12 over 1? What do I get for this term? What do I get? 9. 9 what? X. Right, you can't forget your x, so that's your coefficient there. And 6 times 12 is 72. So when we simplify it, we get 10 minus 9x equals 72. And we all know how to solve that. What do I do first? Minus 10, because this is a positive 10, so we minus 10 to both sides. Good job, whoever said that. And I have, don't forget the negative, 9x equals what? 62. 62. Divide both sides by? Negative 9. Excellent. Negative 9. And I get x equals, hmm, can I simplify 62 over a negative 9 anyway? Do they have anything? Well, the only thing that can, 9 can't go into 62. What are the other factors of 9? 3. Can 3 go into 62? No, so that can't be simplified anymore. A negative 62 over 9 is your final answer. And that's it for today. Like I said, now your homework are the last pages in your packet, 13 and 14, and I don't want any decimal answers. Leave them all in fraction answers, please. And that's due tomorrow.